All right, let's talk about George Kittle, who is someone who, going into this game, uh, definitely, we thought, should have a big impact. He's a big impact player. We're expecting good things out of him. He ends the day with two receptions for four yards, which is, quite frankly, shocking uh, in, in, in a game where the offense wasn't always able to run smoothly and the 49ers ultimately lost. I do think it's worth you know, going back watching what happened and you know, kind of figuring out what went wrong. Now, I want to start off with a play, though, that maybe would have helped him out a little bit had this play uh, stood. So it got called back due to a penalty. But here's the play. First, it's an over-the-middle route against zone. And the Kansas City Chiefs did a really good job of covering these routes for the most part, right? There was the occasional time when they weren't able to, but for the most part, did a very good job of covering this stuff up. You see here, Purdy takes the snap. He does look over, uh, actually in a different direction, but doesn't love what he sees. Now has to scramble out. I'm going to pause it right here, but you know, so play didn't work that work out the way it was designed. However, Purdy in this scramble drill situation eventually finds, uh, you know, Kittle. And what was one of Purdy's better plays and one of Kittle's better plays, they were able to hit on a second down and 17, get the conversion, except there was a holding penalty that called it back. I do wonder if you're giving Kittle an extra 20 yards and having him make a splash play, does that like change the narrative and also might have changed the game because they ended up punting uh, on this drive. So there's that aspect as well. But that was certainly a part of it. And also just like some of it was by design, him not getting a lot of touches, like something like this, it's going to be a second down and two situation and they're running the football. You see Kittle is in motion and Kittle, you know, one of the better blocking tight ends in football. We all kind of know this. Watch when it begins. You see how right there he's initiating the contact, is in position and then watch what he's going to do to finish off this play. As you see, really good job, you know, finishes off that block, gives McCaffrey some room to run. So definitely there was an element of him blocking. Uh, and then also, you know, the Niners love their play actions and love to do stuff off of that. So because of it, sometimes even in a passing game, he's going to either be blocking or kind of like, you know, the fact that he might be blocking still means he can't just go out and run a traditional route. Like something like this is a good example where it's a cover two zone and his route, since he's the tight end here, going to start off blocking and then just run kind of a check down route. That's what his assi assignment is here. As you see, Purdy takes a snap. And I mean, again, Kittle does everything right. Like this is what you're supposed to do on this play. Helps out his tackle and is in position if Purdy decides he wants to, uh, you know, hit uh, Kittle on this one. Instead, Purdy, it looks like he might have gotten hit as he was thrown, I'm assuming, because it was a weird play. Uh, ball goes, uh, you know, nowhere near where it needed to be for Samuel to make that grab, but Samuel was open, so I get why he made that call. But definitely some stuff like that, where, okay, that's part of why maybe he didn't have some of the numbers. But at the same time, you could say this in a lot of games with George Kittle, right? Like, he usually is blocking on a good amount of plays. He usually is, you know, sometimes running check down routes and stuff like that. Like that, you know, that's not a completely new thing. And to be honest, watching the tape, I don't know if I saw like this happening more than I usually see with Kittle. So I don't know if that's actually a fair excuse, even though, you know, in theory, it kind of feels like it could be one. But like, let's go over to something like this. So what's going to happen here is Kittle has a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside. And the reality is, you know, uh, Chiefs defend this stuff really well, uh, largely due to like Legereus Needs awesome at that. And he was awesome at that in this game. But still, you know, you have other options and maybe not going with a wide receiver is a way to potentially get a win on the outside. I think that's what they're thinking right here. The guy who's covering Kittle is a uh, fourth round rookie, uh, Chamari Connor, who, uh, you know, has played well this season. Like He's one of those guys that PFF loves. PFF has him as one of their highest graded players, despite the fact that only has like, you know, uh, a little over 400 snaps. But PFF's a big fan. Uh, and everything I've seen, uh, I haven't done a deep dive on Chamari Connor, but everything I've seen does seem to look pretty good. So not a bad player whatsoever. At the same time, it is still a fourth round rookie that you're going up like you have to find a way to win here in a one-on-one -on -one matchup if you're a star player right you see that purdy is going to take the snap and you know fires it down the field and for uh kittle he's just not open and like it's one of those situations where you know everyone was criticizing shanahan for passing the ball in you know the this stretch when they went three and out three straight times but like i think always this is always the case in sports in general is people always are hypercritical on the coaches but not critical on the players like at the same time i'm sorry like kittle you gotta get open here you just do 
I should mention, I'm sure people have already typed this in the comments below, but Kittle did seem to, you know, at one point he went to the locker room and back. That was after this uh, point in the game, but I do wonder, is it possible he was dealing with some kind of injury? But regardless, you have to, the, kind of the way I view it, it's like they needed a George Kittle, Kittle caliber player in this game. George Kittle was not able to do that, whether it was because he physically couldn't or because he just had a bad day. I still think it's fair to say that that's kind of what happened. As you see, you know, a uh, weird situation too, where it almost felt like Kittle maybe still could have had a chance despite not a ton of separation, had, you know, maybe turned his head around a little bit earlier. That's just a weird, weird play by Kittle, weird play by Purdy, not able to get it done. Now, going over here, we have to mention, like, Kittle also had one of the plays of the game in the favor of the 49ers, which if the 49ers ended up winning this game, we're looking at the, you know, we're, the way we're viewing Kittle's performance is, hey, wasn't great, but he made the play they needed him to make, and, and he did. It's a fourth down and three. Uh, they're down three points, but are still going for it. So, uh, you know, everyone who criticized the Dan Campbell uh, call, you kind of got to criticize this one too, right? You see Kittle's route, though. It's a, you know, a, good, a route that can definitely get open in this situation, but not a route that you're looking at and saying, oh, that's for sure going to get open. So let's see what happens. Watch as when this play begins, Purdy looks over. He is, you know, looking to fire towards Kittle, and Kittle's definitely open, but also he's short of the sticks right here. So this is the this is the the issue going up against Justin Reed. It's you know, can Purdy make a good enough throw to allow Kittle to make the catch, turn the corner, and pick up the first down, and then can Kittle do that? And they do, uh, you know, a really good job by Kittle. I mean, this was a you know great work by Kittle, exactly what they needed him for. So again, he was able to make. The one play they needed him to make, but they probably needed him to make one more. And in fact, he would get an opportunity later on in the game. It's this one. So it's a second down and five situation. Uh, and the way this play is going to work is that for Kittle, going to start off blocking and then run a route towards the top of the screen. There's a play action that's hopefully going to get Trent McDuffie out of position. And again, the situation is definitely the main thing to talk about here as the 49ers are just on the outside of field goal range, but also they are you know, close to the two minute warning. There's a chance that they could run out this clock, kick a field goal as time expires, which is definitely their goal here. And when this play begins, Purdy is going to run to play action, and Kittle has a step on McDuffie. He does. So, like, hey, get a perfect throw. You know, if Kittle can run by McDuffie, turn the corner, pick up a first down, you keep the clock rolling, you're going to get inside the, you know, two-minute warning at that point. Chiefs only have two timeouts. Like, you know, you're feeling pretty good about yourself if you get this first down. However, uh, Purdy, you know, again, throw was kind of a bit behind. Like, I don't know how much uh, Kittle could have really done on that play. But again, it's one of those things where all year Kittle was hitting on that play. Like, that was a great job by Trent McDuffie. That was a great job by the, you know, uh, Nick Bolton to come over and disrupt the play for Purdy, make it a tougher throw. At the same time, though, like, they needed a great play from Kittle because he's a great player and wasn't able to do it on that one. So is it fair to blame Kittle? I mean, like... I think it's fair to say this was not Kittle's best day, and it was a Super Bowl that they lost in overtime, so, like, it's definitely fair to put some blame on him. I mean, if a quarterback had that kind of day, everyone would be crushing him, so we all like Kittle. Kittle's a really fun player to watch and really fun personality, but yeah, I'm sure, again, maybe he's dealing with some sort of injury, uh, and that's why, but, you know, uh, definitely the fact that he wasn't able to play, like, a typical George Kittle game was a huge part of why the Chiefs won. That's what I think. What do you think? Also, I should mention, you know, obviously goes without saying big part of this is Chiefs defending well, but that goes without saying. But yeah, uh, that's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.